When the new Court for Divorce and Matrimonial Causes opened in London in 1858, it was the first time that divorce had been made affordable to the middle classes of England. Until then, only a couple of divorces had been granted a year to the very rich because they required a special private act of parliament for the dissolution of a marriage. The new law was designed to make divorce fairer, uh, more transparent, rational, and yet it did preserve a double standard for men and women. The case which I write about in Mrs Robinson's Disgrace, the husband was suing for divorce on the grounds of his wife's adultery. He, too, he was an adulterer. He had um, a mistress and two illegitimate daughters, as I discovered when I read Isabella Robinson's private correspondence. But this fact was never mentioned in court because it had no legal bearing on the case. The reason for the double standard applied to men and women in these cases was partly that the adulteress was perceived as a much graver threat to society because she could pollute her husband's bloodline um, by having secretly having an affair with someone else and bearing him a child that he thought her husband a child that he thought was his but there was another um, f thing that it reflected, which was the fact that many of the medical manuals of the time associated strong female sexual desire with insanity. And when this case came to trial, Isabella Robinson's lawyers argued that in fact the diary in which she had apparently recorded her adulterous affair was itself a symptom of disease and that the sexual scenes that she had written had never really happened, but were just hallucinations of an erotomaniac imagination.